Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday. Today is September uh, the 15th. It's so great to see you, or you see me. We're not live today, y'all. This is pre recorded. I'm hoping to set it up as a premiere, though, so we might be talking in the live chat. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> we shall see. Hi, everybody. Today we're doing the baby giraffe applique. Down in the description box, you'll see a couple links. One is for the free PDF of all of the tracing bits. See all those little circles? Yikes. We're going to talk about some ways to make this block a little bit easier. I do think I have all my pieces cut out. Cutting out all the pieces and looking at them, I do think that this might be the hardest applique in our series of baby appliques so far, but I don't want you to get discouraged. I'm going to share a couple of tips that might make it easier for you today, okay? Um, let's see, before we get started, I want to show you what this baby giraffe block would look like repeated as a quilt. So let me find that. There you go. Isn't that adorable? If you were just to make this block over and over again and put it together with some sashing, wouldn't that be adorable? So if you took this block and you mixed it up with some of the other blocks that we've done, and I was looking at this, I think <laughs> I've left some blocks out. But if you were just to mix it up with some of the other blocks we've done, you'd get a cute little quilt that looks kind of like this, right? Isn't that cute? Which one is your favorite so far? I would just love to hear in the comment section, which one has been your favorite so far? So next week, we are indeed doing the baby cow, and this is what that block is going to look like. Isn't that adorable? So make sure you subscribe and you stay tuned. You might wanna click the bell notification uh, so you get reminded that the video is up, right? And then you can come get your applique templates. Isn't that so cute? All right, let me clear off all of this stuff. Y'all, I rearranged this morning. <laughs> so I'm going to be um, trying to get familiar with the way things are set up. Like I moved my sewing machine over here and my cutting mat and pressing board over here. I think in the long run, it's going to give me more working space. <laughs> uh, we'll see how it goes. But if I go to the wrong place or if I get confused, that's why. I just, out of the blue, rearranged everything this morning. <laughs> do you ever get a hankering just to do that? That was this morning for me. All right, we're going to come over to the cutting mat. And we're going to take a look at this PDF, right? So... Lots of tracing templates with this file. Lots of circles. You have the nostril circles, right? The little nose holes. <laughs> those are tiny. Then you have the eyes, and those are only just a little bit bigger. And then up here, you have the two like little, what are those, like antennas? I don't know the technical word for that on top of the giraffe's head. And then all of the circles that go with each one of the pieces are located where the pieces are. And I was hoping that that would kind of make it a little less confusing, right? There's lots of circles with this applique. And then you have your tail pieces right there. These templates have been mirror imaged. And I've been seeing a few comments asking um, about the mirror imaging. So if you are tracing with heat and bond or steam a seam, wonder under any of the fusible products, right? And uh, if you're using one of those to trace these templates and cut these out by hand, you're ready to just lay your fusible right on top and trace with this paper right side up. If you are using a freezer paper for your applique, uh, and you want your giraffe situated on your block in this orientation, then you need to flip your paper over and you either need to use a light pad or a window to trace your pieces, okay? The SVG files, there's two of them. One is for scan and cut and one is for Cricut. They're formatted differently so that when you open them up, they're the correct size. Those SVG 
templates have not been mirror imaged. So depending on how you cut your fabric with your machine, you are either ready to start cutting with the templates right side facing up, or if you put your fabric on the mat, the fabric is actually touching the sticky part of the mat and your fusible is facing up, then you need to mirror image your templates before cutting out your pieces. <laughs> All of that sounds really confusing, right? Uh, but I think if you work with them a couple of times, uh, it gets easier to remember. Okay, so there are all of our pieces. I have my silicone mat. Let me turn on this iron and get her heating up. Okay. My chair is so squeaky. I need some WD-40. <laughs> Can you hear that? <laughs> so here are all of my pieces, y'all. And I thought I would arrange everything right here on my silicone mat and make it one applique and then center that onto my block like I have been doing the last several videos. And we have lots of pieces, so y'all bear with me. But I'm gonna just keep this right here so that you can see it, right? And so I can also reference it as a guide. So this might take me a hot minute. I'm gonna just start laying these pieces out. Uh, sort of in the direction that they go. That'll go over there. This is the head or the face. This is the body. So this part right there, right there, is gonna overlap the body section by just a little bit. And when you're looking at this, you can see about how much the pieces need to overlap, right? So I'm just going to put that there like that. And then this piece is going to tuck right up under. More than that. <laughs> My silicone mat is really grippy today. There we go, I think that looks good. And then we have, um, we have an ear and an ear. Let's place that right there. This is why I have my pokey tool. <laughs> And these fabrics that I'm using are going to kind of all just blend in right for a minute. And my thread, when I stitch everything down, will separate all of these pieces. And then I have some feet or some legs. Let's pull those out. The only thing about cutting the pieces out with my scan and cut is usually when I'm tracing and cutting out by hand, I label each piece and I keep that paper on until I'm ready to place the piece, which makes this part so much easier. <laughs> um, all right, let's pull in this first leg here. Like that, it's just gonna tuck right up under and then this is G, this is the back leg. There we go. I think I can actually pull this one down some. There we go, I think that's better. This one is gonna tuck right up, right touching this first leg, the H, right? So grippy today. There 
there we go and then this one is getting tucked up underneath of this leg right there so I'm just gonna lift it up it's gonna kind of make it look like it's further away but we do want it going straight Lisa <laughs> It's not cooperating today. There we go. It's just tucked up and everything's blending in, especially on this silicone mat, right? The little tail piece is going to tuck up under. Oh, <laughs> that is that piece there. Oh, no, it isn't. I had it right. That's going to go there. See what I mean by when I say that this might be the hardest one yet? And then the tail is just going to sit right over top of that. And what I'm going to do is just give this a quick press just to start bonding these pieces together. So when I'm moving things around, I'm not going to shift it anymore. Here comes trouble. One of my cats. <laughs> all right. And so now we have all of these bits right here. So I have, in one brown, I did the bottom of the legs, the eyes, and the nostrils. And in another brown, I did the spots of the giraffe. So let me just figure out which is which here because there's a whole bunch of stuff. A whole bunch of stuff. So we have the little tiny nostrils. So when you're looking at these pieces, see how tiny that is? Today, I'm going to do a free motion stitch to stitch these down. The smaller bits, right? And probably all of the circles, because I think that's going to be much faster. But lots of y'all are extremely new and you might not be comfortable doing a free motion stitch yet. I want to get you there, but you might not be comfortable with it yet. What I wanted to suggest is if the thought of sewing down all of these pieces is going to keep you from making this block. Cooperate. Uh, why not pull out some fabric paint or some fabric markers, right? That is exactly what I would do. That's perfect. I'm going to fuse it. <laughs> That's exactly what I would do if I were not going to do uh, a free motion stitch because those little bits right there are small. And I think even if you used a really tiny, sorry, they're cutting trees down in our neighborhood. <laughs> and I tried to wait until they were done, but it's going to be an all day process. Um, even if you use a really tiny, tiny stitch, zigzag stitch, blanket stitch, it's going to really cover up at least the nostril bits, right? So I'm going to do a free motion stitch, but if I weren't, I would just pull out some fabric paint and paint in uh, the face details and I would probably do the same thing on all the spots too because <laughs> it's a lot. All right, let me get these situated here. These are going to go right down here at the bottom.
That's cute. Yeah, they've been cutting down trees in our neighborhood, you know, clearing the tree limbs away from the power lines. And I almost wonder, uh-oh, I should have done that. Yay, let me grab some scissors. Note to you, before fusing, lay this piece underneath of that leg. I didn't do that. So now I have to cut it. <laughs> um, I almost wonder if that's the reason why our internet's messed up. Like maybe they hit a line. I don't know. See how we just improvise like that? Scoot over. And then scoot you on top. My fancy little pokey tool, y'all, is from the Dollar Tree. It has like a little needle pointy. And then the other end is just a blunt end that you can kind of burnish things with, right? I find it really useful. In all different kinds of ways we can get rid of that piece now then these are gonna go right at the top of the head and I'm just gonna overlap them just a smidgen just a little tiny bit That's super cute. Let me just press that real quick. And then we have a ton of circle pieces. <laughs> See all of those circle pieces like that. So let me pull all those out. And you know what? I'm going to just kind of eyeball most of it. Um, so I know I have three big circles like that, there, and there. And then I have, let's see, I have a circle down here on that leg. I have a circle over here. Oh, let's put that one there. <laughs> we have a circle there. Again, if you're cutting them out by hand and you're actually, you know, like Putting the little letters on it, that might be really, really helpful. I'm going to fuse these before I move anything else. So we're actually kind of taking quite a bit of time just fusing all these pieces in place. All right, let's see. I have a little tiny circle there. Another little tiny circle there. Uh, let's put one there. <laughs> it doesn't really go there. But this is kind of shifted up higher than I thought. Then we have a little half circle there. And we have another half circle here. Let me try and see. There we go. 
And let's put this there and this there. Does that fit there? There we go, y'all. I'm improvising. See that? Still super cute. <laughs> let me fuse all these pieces and let this start cooling off. So in my sewing machine, I have some brown thread in both the top and the bobbin area. And we're going to start off over there with, let's see, a zigzag stitch today, right? Let's do that for this block. As this is cooling off, I'm just going to move it over here and I'm going to bring in my background. So we'll do a zigzag stitch on all the bigger parts. And then I'm going to switch my feet to a free motion foot and uh, bring you along as I stitch down all these little circles. So as this is cooling off, let's talk about that for a second because we're doing raw edge applique, right? So with raw edge applique, depending on how much of that raw edge you're stitching, is going to determine if your pieces will ever fray if you wash your quilt, right? I do have heat and bond light on the back side of all of my fabrics. And I think that that helps reduce the amount of fraying over time versus using the freezer paper method for applique. So even though my zigzag stitch is going to cover a good majority of the raw edges on my bigger piece, which will reduce the fraying. When I do a free motion stitch, I am not really covering the raw edges of these circles. So over time in repeated use and washing, it is possible that the very edges of all of my circles I'm sewing today will fray over time. Not quite as much because of that heat and bond on the back, but it is, it is possible that they will fray. All right, let's see if this is cool enough. I can just peel this right off. Oops. <laughs> I just barely have those circles tucked up underneath the head. So I will manually place this one because it didn't stick. Okay, just keep in mind, so uh, I've marked off a 10 and a half by 10 and a half inch block, but when we sew this in, we're going to lose a quarter of an inch on all four sides. Just keeping that in mind when placing your blocks, right? Placing your applique. Now I'll tuck him back under just a smidgen. Where's my pokey tool? And that looks pretty good on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and fuse everything down. Yes, I think I, if I were doing a whole quilt with nothing but these baby giraffes, fabric paint would be the way to go for me. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> I know that for sure. All right, we're going to just lift this up and let it cool off for a second. And I'm going to bring it over here to the sewing machine. And we're coming over here. All right, I'm going to just take off this little leader. I have my open toe foot on, and I'm hoping that that allows you to see what I'm doing a little bit. And, uh, yeah, that seems pretty cool. Again, I'm going to start with a little baby zigzag stitch. So let me get that set.
I will tell you those settings here in just a second. I'm just seeing if the camera moves. <laughs> I don't really want it to. All right, let's start with this one to begin with. This little stitch, and that's not gonna show up on the purple fabric. The stitch width is a 1.6, and the length is a 0.8, okay? And that's what we're gonna start with. Uh, I think, yep, let's use that. I think I'm gonna go ahead even though I usually like to work on the bottom layer first, I think I'm going to stitch down the tops, just the very tops of the feet, and just work my way across there. And then I'm going to cut my thread, and then I'm going to outline the whole foot. So I'll be stitching down the bottom of the foot and these sides along with the whole leg and make that one continuous motion. Uh, I think that'll look much cleaner. Okay, so let me move it this way. And I might just be able to continue from foot to foot to foot because those parts are really close together. <laughs> Might I have to jump up just a tiny bit for this one. So that gets all of the tops of our feet sewn down. And now I'm just going to uh, outline each one of the legs. Is my arm in the way if I put it here? <laughs> This is going to outline each one of our legs and make them individually stick out, right? See that? It's already separating those two. right here Just stopping when the needle comes underneath of this belly right here 
it's kind of hard to see because it's all the same fabric, right? I'm going to take a second and just think do I want to just continue stitching this down but I don't because we have the little bit of the tail that tucks up underneath the body and I want to go ahead and sew that first. So I will break thread right there and let's just take a look see how the little legs stick out individually now. I think that looks great. Cut all these threads. All right, let's grab this little bit right there. I think what I will do though is start on this one. So that little side going towards the body. And then we'll cut this thread and then we'll sew the other side of that little tail and instead of cutting the thread when we get to the poofy part of the tail we'll continue on and stitch that whole piece. I'm right at the tip of the tail. I'm going to take one complete zigzag, <laughs> right? One whole V-shape and then rotate it and start coming back the other way. Okay, so now we have our little tail and it's all stitched. Now I can come and stitch the whole outline of the body and we're gonna start on the right side, right underneath of the face part. This is going to give us good definition in between the body and separate the legs.
right? See that? Isn't that adorable? We're going to cut this thread. And now we're going to skip up here and we're going to stitch the ears and the two little balls on the top of the head. <laughs> what is that called, y'all? I'm going to start with the first ear. I'm using the same exact zigzag stitch all the way through. You could change it up if you wanted to. Let's cut these little threads. I always think that that's a little distracting. And then we're going to stitch this other ear. So that gives really nice outlines on those pieces. Now I'm gonna flip it all around and we're gonna stitch the face all the way to here. And once we get there, I'm not gonna break the thread and I can complete this portion all the way around. It is windy today. All 
All right, my needle is in the right hand position of the zigzag stitch, right? It goes from right to left to right. My needle is in the right hand position and it's right next to this yellow fabric. So I can just shift this whole block this way and just start stitching the rest of this piece. feel like the fabric paint or fabric marker would take this block I would say this is more advanced if you're stitching it right just because of all the pieces all the circles all the curves <laughs> if you're stitching it I would say it's more on the advanced side right but if you were to eliminate all of the circles and the face details and used fabric paint I think then it would take it from an advanced block, more beginner friendly, I'd say more intermediate, but a beginner could certainly do it without being overwhelmed by all the circles. That's just my thought. What do you think? Either way, I like to push you outside of your comfort zone <laughs> and just see how when we just continue on without breaking the thread, how nice and clean that all looks. All right, so hang out with me for a second. I'm going to take off my free mo. Oh, I can leave that on. I'm going to take that whole thing off and I'm going to put my free motion foot on. So my free motion foot looks like this. I do have an open toe foot one, but for some reason I can never get my tension right with it. So this is the one that came with my machine. Uh, you might have one that's called a darning foot. It does the same thing. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to that foot. And that's a quick little foot change. I like to go ahead and put this thread right through that circle of the foot. There we go. That's everything. All right, so let's talk about this free motion stitch because I know that some of you, y'all just started watching me and you haven't gone back and watched a lot of my other videos yet right and some of you have been watching me for a while and I haven't done this in a while so you might not have seen me do this yet um, my machine there's a little feed dogs has a switch down here underneath of this tray that I can lower my feed dogs I don't like to do that <laughs> I like to go against the grain right you can lower your feed dogs if that gives you a nicer cleaner stitch with less thread issues right some of you don't have the option to lower your feed dogs but yet your machine came with a little plastic plate that goes over and covers them you might want to use that I am going to use a straight stitch so let me set it to a straight stitch and all I do is lower my stitch length to a zero 
I can still feel the feed dogs moving underneath of the fabric, but I have done this so long that I see a difference with my particular machine. The tension just seems to be better when the feed dogs are up. <laughs> and this might just be my machine. It just might be my preference. I don't know. So my feed dogs are up. You can lower yours or cover yours if you like. All right, so at this point, I'm just gonna be jumping from one circle to the other. We'll cut all the jump stitches when I'm done. When I start, you might not see it, but I'm gonna take a couple little tiny, tiny stitches in place or right next to each other just to lock everything in. And I'm gonna go around the shape and take a couple little stitches before I move. So those stitches will be locked and I can cut all of my jump stitches when we're done. It's just I don't think you see it very well when I'm doing it. Um, what's another question that I usually get asked? I think that's it. All right, we're gonna get started. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start uh, right here. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. When I'm stitching, and it's gonna maybe be hard to see because I'm using a brown thread and we're stitching on brownish fabric, right? That's some of my new brown fabric. I am staying close to the edge, but not exactly on the edge. I'm gonna be just inside, depending on how my stitching does, just inside the circle shape, okay? I'm not stitching right on the edge, and that's okay. All right, we're gonna start right here. Thread down, needle down. I'm gonna raise the needle and I'm gonna pull up that bottom thread. I wanna hold them both and lower that needle back down in the same exact place. Take a couple stitches and we are off and running. I'm gonna lower this foot a little bit closer to my work so there's lot less uh, fabric pulling up right sometimes that can mess with your tension and even break your thread all right here we go See how fast I stitched down that circle? <laughs> and now we're jumping to the next. The needle I'm using today is a 9014 universal needle. It's a larger needle um, because with my particular thread doing the free motion through layers of fabric and heat and bond, the larger needle makes a larger hole, which allows for the thread to go through all of those things and less likely for my thread to break. how quickly you can just move from one to the next.
I have a feeling we'd still be stitching down one of these circles back here <laughs> if I were using a blanket or a zigzag stitch. Alright, we're moving up to the tiny little nostrils. They are big trucks, you might hear some background noise. And then we have the two eyes. Now, if you used fabric paint or fabric markers, you would not have to stitch down any of those pieces, right? You would just have to uh, heat set all of the paint once it's dry, and you would not have to sew down any of those things, <laughs> right? You might even want to paint the whole entire applique. I mean, wouldn't that be fun? So let me just cut these little jump stitches here. Like, don't those guys know I'm making a video? <laughs> don't they know? I guess they didn't. No one informed them. <laughs> it is a good thing, though, that they are trimming back all of the tree branches throughout our whole area from the power lines because... I think a strong wind and this whole area would be out of power. <laughs> all right, there's quite a few little jump stitches. Did I get them all? I think I did. We have some on the back too. And you know what? I'm going to just leave those. I'm going to cut the threads that will hang over the applique just in case they show up through that background fabric, right? But there we go. Isn't that super cute? I'm going to hold it up. I don't know how crystal clear it'll be. My circles, the free motion stitch circles, they're not exactly perfect. And I think that's okay, right? The important part is all of those pieces are stitched down and it was a lot less stressful y'all <laughs> so I encourage you to give this a try if you've never tried it maybe you have tried it and it was super frustrating I get it the first several times I did free motion stitching I thought it was frustrating too but just like with anything the more you do it 
the more you practice, the better and more comfortable you get, right? Give this a try. What I really want you to do, if you make this block, is to share it with us over on the Creative Crew. There's a link for the Creative Crew if you haven't joined yet, uh, down in the description box below. And we share all kinds of stuff, y'all. All kinds of stuff. Creative stuff. Painting. Uh, quilt making. Sewing. Bag making. All kinds of making. Um, crochet. Knitting. Felting. All kinds of stuff. So we'd love to see your work over there. Uh, the baby cow. Okay, this time I can say it and be right. The baby cow is the last applique that we're doing in the baby applique series. We're going to move on to do maybe some fall and Christmas themed appliques next. Um, maybe some barnyard animals and I'll probably mix stuff up. Like this week we might do Christmas and next week we might do fall. Like just as I think of things we're just going to do them. <laughs> There's going to be no rhyme or reason or order we're going to be all willy-nilly with our applique. And we might even call that the willy-nilly applique series. How does that sound? Okay, everybody. Thanks for bearing with me with my new arrangement. I hope the camera didn't move too much when I was sewing. Thank you for uh, dealing with background noise today. Here lately I've been saying there's a lot of things out of my control. And we just have to deal with it. <laughs> And I'm working really hard on not getting stressed out about all this stuff out of my control. I'm working, it's a, it's, um, a journey for me and it's a struggle and it's something I have to work on on a daily basis. <laughs> and some days I'm better at it than others. All right, y'all. I did miss seeing your live chat today. Please leave a comment down below. And, uh, yeah, you might want to share this video with your friends who love applique or those who have never tried applique. Send them an easier block than the draft, though. <laughs> I love you so much. I'll see y'all next week, okay? Bye.